an S650 Mustang. This thing is literally brand new already at Salvage Auction. This was the first one that I remembered seeing get listed on Copar. This is the first one that I have seen run. I know that at least one of these has been parted out already. I don't know if it went through Salvage Auction and I just missed it or if it was one that didn't go through, but this is an early one and I'm excited to see what this thing sells for. These, as you would expect from Mustang owners, are just pouring into Salvage Auction wreck. There's going to be more to come from these particular chassis, but this one specifically we're going to dive into for a Salvage Auction analysis right now. On Copart, we are pre-bid to $16,600, and this one is a pure sale. I love this impact from a parts perspective, and if this thing stays reasonable, then we're going to make a run at this because I want to get my hands on one of these. I don't know a ton about them, and in our experience from a parts perspective, kind of you just got to buy one, dive in, you learn a lot, you try and minimize how much money you're going to lose on it if you make money on the first one that's always a bonus but this one has 735 miles it is an engine start program this one is an auto we're not even going to copy the vin because we're not looking up auction history on this thing there is no auction history we know the situation with this this is an insurance car pre-accident value of almost sixty thousand dollars looking at the pictures here this thing is just absolutely whacked but i do like this impact because we have a lot of front end parts the front bumper the headlights it looks like the hood and the fender obviously on this side are completely trashed but all our suspension corners are good when we move to the rear you have an entire rear end on the car tail lights trunk bumper so if you have rear impact cars that would mean that that could sell pretty well for us these are all the reasons that I like this thing from a parts perspective. It's definitely not a fixer. The passenger fender over here looks pretty good. I think that that's definitely usable, though we do have a flat tire, which isn't a big deal as long as the wheel itself isn't messed up. This one is looks to be a pretty high option car. Again, I don't know a ton about the different packages on these. So if you know what package this is, initially I thought this was a dark horse, but it's definitely not. It doesn't have the badges and everything. Going into the interior, not necessarily the most desirable uh, interior color scheme on it. The seats look pretty similar to the S550s, and this one does have the blown airbags. Although, kind of ironically enough, the steering wheel airbag did not blow. One of my main concerns is that screen, which is new to the S650s, if it was damaged at all. It looks like when the dash crunched up that maybe we got lucky and it didn't, but Really, there's, I think, a lot to learn on these cars. That beautiful gauge cluster, I don't see any cracks. I know that these are kind of a point of contention that a lot of people don't like the big screens. They want more of a traditional style gauge cluster. The S550 digital clusters were absolutely phenomenal, but they always have to be making progressions. And with all the EV cars, that seems to be the route that they're going. Rear seats look fine. Under the hood here, the beautiful dual throttle bodies. From a, a visual presentation, these engine bays, that dual throttle body look really just looks tough. It stands out. I like it a lot. I am curious. We have nothing to go off of from a value perspective to figure out if the motor is worth more i do have a customer in colorado that buys a lot of the third gen coyote motors from us so we'll probably learn pretty quickly if we are able to win this thing we're not going to waste any more time we're jumping right in on this it's running at auction here in a couple minutes we're going to get into the auction here we're going to see what this thing sells for hopefully we're able to buy it and then we'll talk a little bit more about it after the fact Alrighty, let's see what happens here. Alex and I both said, Iraq, wow, that's kind of crazy. Alex and I both said that we were comfortable on this car in the 17 to 17.5 range. I kind of don't think that it's going to stay there. But I will explain why from a parts perspective, a car this new is really not a good thing. Yeah. All right, let's, let's take a little back seat here and see what happens. Multiple Florida bidders, a lot of overseas. That's kind of interesting, but 
Oh wow, now this thing is getting action. There are multiple overseas. I've seen United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, I think I saw Iraq. There's a lot overseas and there's several Florida bidders in on this, which are probably, it's entirely possible that they are exporters. So this one might be headed out of the country. And that is a trend that we've noticed in the recent years as overseas markets continue to increase basically exponentially. They don't care about the titling situation. In a lot of instances, they don't care about the damage. The demand is so high over there for cars in general, but also higher end cars like this, that they will buy virtually anything and fix virtually anything for a lot of the times higher prices than what people in the United States are willing to pay for these. $20,000 for a just completely destroyed brand new S650 Mustang. I can't say that I'm surprised, but I'm still just a little bit shocked. Let's see what this thing ultimately goes for. Wow, this thing is running now. Just jumped up $1,000 like it was nothing. $22,000 plus auction fees. Oh, maybe this is the end. 22,000 is enough. There you have it. And that one is selling. That was a pure sale. That's just a, that's a big number. Now, I do wanna talk about for a minute why a brand new car like that from a parts perspective is not good in our experience, pretty much at all. Um, from a YouTube perspective, doing a video on that would be great being one of the first ones of those to be documented, especially with that much damage. I know there's a lot of people just doing the videos on them in general, but not a whole lot of wrecked ones. So that would be great from an Instagram perspective, from a marketing perspective, it's very, very good to be early to the game on those. And it also establishes that you have the parts as they become more plentiful. But when you have the first of those parts of a brand new car, a lot of people just go directly to the dealer. They're not gonna come to you for the used parts because they don't expect to find them yet. So there's kind of a lag on people looking for the parts used and then also condition issues are not a problem. You don't have people that say, hey, my headlights are kind of uh, hazy or you know, my, my interior you know, screen has some scratches. The cars are still so new that they don't have those condition issues and that's a large part of the parts market. That's why we love C6 and C5 Corvettes because they are old enough that the replacement market is absolutely massive and then you still have the market for the drive lines. The drive line on that would have been super desirable. I think that even if we listed it and didn't sell it to our customer that buys them, which he probably would have, I think that thing would have been gone in days if it was priced accurately and it probably would have commanded something like 14, 15 grand, that's what super low mileage Gen 3s do. So a Gen 4 would have to do that. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I love opening these up for discussion and I am very active in the comments. I like going back and forth with the people that like to have conversations about these salvage auction cars. Certainly there's gonna be people watching this video that have more knowledge than me on this chassis, 
maybe some of the new parts, the advancements where there could have been some extra value over what we're used to with the Gen 3 Mustangs. But if you want to have a chat, jump down in the comment section um, and we'll see what we can kind of get going as far as good conversation about this particular vehicle. As always, thank you for watching. We have a ton of good content on the main channel where the projects go down and then also the side channel where we're doing just a mix of different salvage auction analysis and smaller short form videos. So thank you for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.